It doesn't matter who you are or what you have. Life can be pretty hard. And without a healthy mind, it's even harder. Check out online therapy with betterhelp.com slash love hour. And be on your way to a little more ease. One more time, that's betterhelp.com slash love hour. And be love on your hour. way to a little more ease. Use code love hour. Love hour. And now let's get to the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Love Hour Podcast. I'm your host, Miss Kev, on stage. And I'm joined by my husband and co-host. Two in the pink, one in the stink. Oh, my God. What? Kev on stage. Why why was that? (laughs) Why would you say that? All right. So thank you so much for that introduction, Kevin Fredericks. And uh, Joshua has a mic because really quickly we are going to do the this week in the Fredericks household. And uh, by the time this comes out, it would have been two days prior. So on the Monday that this episode, the prior Monday that this episode drops, we all attended Serene's um, homegoing service. Mm -hmm. And um, Joshua was kind of having his own revelation. But I just wanted to say this because I said this uh, in our uh, session yesterday that uh, I wish I would have said it in my caption. The generosity of Tony Baker's heart mm-hmm. to encourage an audience in his deepest moments of loss yes. is just a, a strength that is um, superhuman yeah. is the only way that I can explain it. And coupled with that, though, is the strength to break down for that split second. Yes to have that type of vulnerability. And so I always want to be uh, even very careful in the way that I describe the strength of Tony that allows him to be strong when he feels strong and to live in moments of sadness and vulnerability and recognize that as strength as well. Yes. And they can coexist uh, together. And he embodied strength, both sides of that spectrum together eulogizing his son absolutely um it was a beautiful beautiful home gum coming or home going that allowed tony to do a 10 or 15 minute set a hot 15 a hot 15 i mean, I mean we were in there cackling crying laughing literally yeah not crying laughing from laughter yeah crying, crying. crying also laughing yes that is the crying laughing yes uh, that I've never experienced. Usually you laugh until tears. I was already crying right. and then laughing and then like, man, because he, I mean, we knew Serene, you know, for a while. Yeah. Young. Uh, met him 2014 when Tony started coming around all deaf. Uh, he came on the road with us a couple of times. Mm-hmm. He came to Hawaii with us, which was also kind of like, wow. Some of the pictures in his. Yeah you know, program where when he was with us in Hawaii, a lot of the videos Sabrina sh- has been sharing are on that trip to Hawaii. And they weren't with us in all of them, yeah, but yeah. a lot of them, we were, remember one picture on his thing, he, we were hiking. Right. It's when we thought this hike was going to be five minutes and it was like three hours, two and a half, three hours in the jungle. Right. But it was great mm-hmm. at the end. We yeah. had a lot of stuff planned that day and then it just ended up being like, okay, we're just going to do that. But um, yeah, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, go uh, ahead. I was just like, that was on my third funeral that I've ever been to. Really? Only my third funeral. My great grandma passed away. My uncle Rudy passed away. These are the ones that I went too. to. And then Serene's. The only one that was tragic. Um, and uh, I definitely cried more than Tony. I thought I would. I did. I was. Whew. I cried a lot. But uh, yeah, in that moment, I was like, man, Tony is. This is a gift from yeah, God. It is. He doesn't even he doesn't want people to feel sad right so he will take on the like you know he's a, he's a tough crowd in here at a, at a funeral he's looking to at be. the pastor man yeah i i i truly uh ah. I, don't know, I think we all including the live stream and then everyone in the audience was just quite literally staring in awe because we were like cracking up me kev and joshua all sat together and they're like 
what is he doing? But it was so beautiful because he was also, it just wasn't comedy. He was also He was telling talk, you about yeah, his yeah, life. He learned Josh. about, He's yeah. just funny, yeah. so it became comedic. Yeah. You know, like, he'd be crying. Yeah. That whole day. You know, that was like a memory that right. he remembered, but he just told the story comedically. You yeah. know what I mean? Him being late, that's a joke. Yeah. Like, how you gonna be late to heaven? <laughs> yes, how are that you was how, funny. you getting dressed? Yeah. We're spirits. <laughs> like, that's hilarious. Tony, man. Yeah. Oh. Uh so anyway, it was a beautiful homecoming going um service for Serene. Uh if you're interested in watching, Tony does have the link in his Instagram bio. I don't know if it'll still be up by the time this is. Did 40k. This uh did it really? Did it really? So Rain was that guy, certified CB. Certified, certified CB. Certified CB. Um, but from that, Joshua was sharing with us before the cameras turned on about some of the, the moments that he's captured. I sent a voice note to Joshua not that long ago. And I actually was in one of my posts, like from the first tour, mm -hmm. talking about how you rarely see Joshua in pictures of everyone because he's always behind the camera, obviously. Yeah. And I was thinking about, um, I was like, oh man, that kind of sucks. It's kind of why even when we're doing events, I'm like, Joshua, I don't want you to work. Cause I want you to like be able to enjoy the moment and like be captured in the pictures. But at the same time, I remember saying um, that your presence is always felt mm -hmm. because it's always your eye. Mm. Like literally whatever picture you have is literally it's Joshua's eye. eye. in the picture, but it's Joshua's eye take out a picture correct but only one eye because the other is closed right so Open joshua do you want to share what uh your revelation was yeah um i mean what i've been feeling for the past month uh since about the philly show because I, I don't i mean it, it hit the new york show but the Philly show date is a date where we were like okay we can put all this on pause and be perfectly fine with it but um, I took a photo of Kev on stage, and he was like, "It's it's honestly tough to to catch a good photo of you on stage because what I notice is you don't laugh too much because you're focused on telling the story. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, so that sometimes makes it difficult. The way the when I feel like I can get a photo of you is like in between jokes when you do like a little chuckle, but then you'll yeah. grab a towel, and then it's a whole thing. <laughs> I'm noticing the 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 little tendencies that you have, but this one joke specifically, I th I think. You were still developing it. I forget what joke it was, but you actually laughed pretty hard. And that's mm. where you like tilted your head back. Yeah. And for me in that, not necessarily in that moment when I was going through, or even when I took it, I was like, okay, that's gonna be something cool. I'll like, I take like a mental note. Um, with as many that I take, there's literally a few of them that I actually were, am excited about for the most part. Mm -hmm. Editing that one, um, cause especially in the green room, that green room was a tough green room to be in that night for everybody. Uh, can you provide context? It was just, you felt the weight of sadness. Um, that's when uh, Sincere posted the photo or mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of him and his brother when they were mm. younger without getting into further context. Yes. To keep Kev from folding. Yeah, I'm not going to fold. I, I don't have any more tears left. I, I think I'll be refilled by either, Thursday. I, folded, I folded for two hours straight yesterday. <laughs> but um, during that moment and even before that, like it hit me right before we got in the car to get to the show. Um, and it was tough to get through those two shows. Cause that's the thing too, right? Is like everybody in the room knew at that point too. the first night in New York, uh, nobody else knew meaning nobody else, meaning like this, the, the, audience the public, didn't know. but by Philly people knew slowly because I think Tony announced it to his Patreon. Patreon. First. Um, so people who were, through and through supporters, like, new. Um, but that night was especially hard for everybody to get through. But uh, so behind that photo that I took of Kev laughing super hard, uh, it was kind of like, it was almost like a therapeutic moment of, like, kind of like not laughing through that, but still finding the joy in what you're doing in general, Kev being uh, the performance mode that you were in. Uh, being around the community that is supportive. Mm -hmm. uh, so for me, it was kind of like redefining my own purpose in photography of like documenting those moments because of the story that's behind some of those photos. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And especially during this uh, this last month, you know, being able to go to pull up on tone, 
like we all did this past week and getting some photos of those first moments of him back on his tour uh, stage and him saying on stage, man, when y'all said, let's go, it felt like, yeah, being a a, a, like a, a hug from everybody. Yeah. And you capturing that. Right. When he in, when took he, that breath and in and that smile. Yeah. Um, oh. Yeah, that's what he like did. That's, literally. that's the moment and feeling that I have every, of him saying those words verbatim. Being there, obviously, like if you're not there, it's super hard to feel that energy. But um, trying to describe it in a in a caption still doesn't do it full justice, mm -hmm. you know. So that's why even like I was going into it, I was like, it, it could be cool to find a moment where he does say, "Let's go on stage." I knew it was gonna happen at the end, but even the one that happened at the end. I didn't think was as good as the one. Yeah. They caught him off guard. Someone yeah. said it in the crowd. Yeah. Someone said it in the crowd. I was like, <sighs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were all man. But the crowd, I will say experiencing that crowd. And this is one thing why I love live shows is seeing a talent in their element in a room full of people that are genuinely supportive of yeah. them. Yes. And feeling the crowd's energy. But this one's felt different because this was a comfort. Yes. This wasn't like, oh, we're happy to see you. This yeah. one's like, we are here. Yes. And like, yes. We're emotionally. for you to be here. We're yeah. all emotional. Yeah. There was an elephant in the room the entire time. Yes. Mm -hmm. And when somebody said, let's go, it broke that wall. It did. It broke that wall and Tone didn't address it, but he's like, that felt like everybody was hugging me. Yeah. Man. People were standing up, clapping for him before he even came out. So, like, having these stories with those photos as context, like, it's, and then capturing those moments, like, of him with that big breath in, like, like that sigh of relief, like, I needed that hug. Yes. yes. You know? um, yeah. That's something I'm grateful to be able to grab and share with people specifically. Because if you're not there, you'll, you would never know that moment happened. Yeah. That's why your photo book will be, like, here's the story behind the picture. It is. It's almost like uh, Barack Obama's photographer. I can't think of his Pete, name. Uh, oh, Pete D'Souza. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I follow him on Instagram. And when he shows photos, um, especially uh, directly after President Obama's um, tenure, uh, he would start posting pictures from his archives and they would always have like a really interesting mm -hmm. story behind yeah. it. Yeah. And I think that's what kind of even what you're saying for people that now can go back and you see the picture of Tony Baker and it literally looks like he's kind of inhaling he has mm -hmm. a huge smile on his face mm -hmm. that's the story that josh was Taking telling the love. when people someone said let's go the audience kind of joined in and he literally said that felt like everyone just gave me a really warm big hug um and it was special yeah. i mean it really was i i said yesterday on facebook that i am exhausted it's oh true because we've yes. been going 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 and i haven't traveled with you guys in a while um and i also wouldn't change anything mm -mm. Uh, we melissa was like uh i want to go to tony's show it was melt my sister's idea oh, okay uh well Liz told me and i was like yes and i i didn't think we i was gonna be able to make it because i thought we were mirroring each other friday through sunday but he was thursday through saturday and we were friday through sunday so it worked out and as soon as i told the tour group uh josh was like i'm coming and i was like oh good because then he'll he'll get the picture uh, or be able to take some pictures. And um, I think you can, sh you know, there's a lot of different ways to show up for your friends. You know, everybody couldn't come, couldn't be there. They have their own things or whatever. But um, to be able to be there, you know, and then I ended up performing the second Which show. Which was amazing. Yeah, like, and I was like, you know, Atlanta's always great anyway. But that crowd, I, I this is when I'm even more grateful that, by this time in my career and even Tony's career, the majority of the audience that is there is there specifically to see you. Yeah. Sometimes in clubs, depending on where you are career wise, they're coming because they like the club or they just want to go out and they don't really care who's on the stage. And there's always some people in the audience like that for us, but it's not a big portion. So by the time Tony was performing, you know, the Serene's passing was, you know, three, three weeks before, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, you yeah. know, but it was Tony's first time headlining. He said that when he performed in, um, LA he did like 10 minutes but he didn't really feel like himself yeah. and this was the one where he was like okay like yeah. you know and then he proceeded to just his jokes I I'm not gonna spoil any but his jokes post Serene's passing I'm like I've used this example before it's like being in the NBA and being good like maybe even an all-star 
and then also playing against LeBron. Right. And when I'm a comedian watching Tony, I'm like, I've, I'm confident in my abilities. I build a good audience. I think I'm funny. I think I'm good at stand-up comedy. Tony is LeBron. <laughs> You're just like, yeah. I mean, we're both doing this. He's doing something else. Yeah. He's doing something I could not do. I'm right. glad to be in the same industry, even more glad to be his friend. But I can recognize this man is better at this than almost anybody. Yeah. And it's a, it's a joy to watch somebody be at the top of their craft. Yeah. And is. that man is his ability to say, uh, take anything, 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 and make a joke. Yeah. And even this painful moment, right. how are you making me feel good at your son's funeral? Right. Listen. That, I mean, and that was that was part of the two. Not that it was ever a question before of his storytelling, right? But all of his stories that he tells on stage when he's talking about something always felt authentic. But there's yeah. a different type of authenticity now when he's speaking it, and like especially just to be able to just be like un what's the word I'm looking for? Like unintentionally funny, You're right? Yeah. Um, like he did when he was when he was speaking at at the service, like. He was not go. He's not going into that. Oh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a yeah. Go it's not about the set with the, with the fifteen. No, nah, right. he didn't write no jokes down. No, it's he just, was not doing stand up. He was talking about yeah, his son's, son's life. life. Right. He was. He's just funny, right? And he said, "Oh, he commented because I had made a video yesterday, and I was just talking about how I was in awe of him." He was like, "I don't even know what I was up there doing." Mm. I and was it, just talking. I, I think that was the most beautiful part to your point that he was literally, he didn't go in intentionally thinking I'm about to do a 15 minute set yeah. at right. my son's funeral. Um, he was literally just talking. He's just really funny anyway. And then also though, you have to remember the first thing he said is, man, y'all sad in here. Lighten <laughs> up. Mm. And that's why I started with the generosity of his heart. Yeah. Of recognizing I, I want to lift the room i want to bring some light and levity to the room and being able to do that at your son's funeral Man. your oldest son's funeral i need to tell him this too i'm a great father a fantastic i know that everybody knows that my wife knows the kids know got great parents Melissa's a great mother. I asked Joe in the car yesterday. He's like, how do you feel about your parents? He's like, you guys are really good. He's like, Any po anything we can work on? He was like, you guys are really great. Because of this situation, I was like, is there anything more I could do? Is there any more moments I could appreciate? And I realized there are some. Like, I miss a lot of JoJo's games because he plays on the weekends and I work on the weekends, especially this tour. But it, usually when I take him to soccer, I'd be like, okay, here we go. Let me schlep you down to soccer practice. And I usually sit in the car and either work or relax, play FIFA, scroll the internet. After this, I was like, I need to, is there any more moments I could take in of his life just in case? Yeah. So after that moment, I now get out of the car. I uh, started watching Joe and I noticed him noticing me mm -hmm. watching him. Mm. The last week I did it and he was like, mm. and you know, Joe be a jerk. And yesterday I, I made the mistake. He does not like to be praised. He did this kid so dirty. I didn't catch it on video because I was like, let me watch some, record some. He embarrassed this kid so bad. And the coach was like, whoo, good job. And I was like, Joe, he was like, now you know. We don't do <laughs> no dog on chair. We already talked about he this. He was, but I'm like, I, a good play is a good play. You know what I'm saying? So anyway. Uh, so I'm sure some of you missed your doctor's appointment and your dentist appointment because of the pandemic. And so you couldn't get your teeth cleaned. And so you are, you didn't go to your, uh, your physical. You didn't see the eye doctor. You didn't do any of your regular health care <laughs> checkups. And these things are important because it's how you stay ahead of things that could be coming down the line. Well, with ZocDoc, you can search for local doctors who take your insurance, read verified patient reviews, and book an, imp uh, an appointment in person or video chat. Never wait on hold for a receptionist A. Again, whether you need a primary care physician, a dentist, a dermatologist, a psychiatrist, an eye doctor, or any other specialist, ZocDoc has you covered. Uh, you guys know that I am a person who is constantly looking for a dermatologist and really good uh, skincare line, and I have used ZocDoc to find my uh, most recent dermatologist that I use um, to help keep my skin glowing because she popping today, ain't she? You are. You look you look good. Uh, so uh, what you need to do is go to ZocDoc.com slash love hour and download the ZocDoc 
app. Mm. I'm going to spell it. Mm-hmm. Z-O-C-D-O-C. App to sign up for free. Every month, millions of people use ZocDoc, and I'm one of them. It's my go-to whenever I need to see a doctor or specialist. Uh, now is the time to prioritize your health. Go to ZocDoc.com slash LoveHour and download the ZocDoc app to sign up for free and book a top-rated doctor. Many are available as soon as today. That's ZocDoc, Z-O-C-D-O-C, dot com slash love hour love hour all right here we go um really quickly as we kind of round this out uh there are a couple really great moments that joshua has caught uh that has story behind them and meaning behind them and they always make me emotional even when i'm scrolling um them the one that we talked about with joe obviously this one uh uh you got when you first performed at caroline's he's had some photos uh, from there the very last tour i'm gonna pause the caroline's okay. you oh god why, why am i crying <laughs> what happened I you oh, no. what happened, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> it was going so well yeah it was i didn't tell you why didn't you well, tell me? I don't know, man. Leave me alone. <laughs> you brought this up. <laughs> Hush. But listen. That, uh, that emotion hit you like man. that. That's how it hits like, me. You thought, you thought I was done with you yesterday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Caroline's show was so important to me career-wise. Because that is a tough yeah, yeah, yeah. Broadway. get. It is New York. It is Broadway. Not an off night. It oh, is. It was. It was. Okay. Oh, but cool. I had a weekend there before, so I'm not even tripping about that. It is hard. And because of the pandemic, I'd already sold out Caroline's the previous Shots of the Patreon. year, Patreon. Yeah. So not only did I get to sell it out, I sold it out on the strength of the Patreon alone. Mm-hmm. And even though, you know, Serene passed, that didn't taint the being like serene loves comedy right he loves his dad's friends who are all comedians uh they said this a lot in the funeral and uh about how he loved being around his dad and being around comedians things like that uh you don't usually get most comics this is why i'm glad you're able to come with us most people don't get to have something to look at right what'd you say i said thank you for having me oh (laughs) they don't get to be like let me just reflect and i'm terrible you you know i'm terrible for reflecting Mm-hmm. I'm like, but that was a goal of yeah. mine. Madison mm-hmm. Square Garden is next. Uh, and it's only 18. It can be done. Yeah, 18, I'm 000. working towards it. It's only 18,000. There's a lot of people I in know New York. What you meant. All we'll I need we'll, you to we'll do, do is. One for the year. Yeah, yeah, we'll New York. Flights. I'm mostly missing, go. y'all. <laughs> Everybody come. Everybody There's a lot of people go. in New York, Philly, Connecticut. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got good eat Northeast. Stage crew, Madison Square Garden. Remember this. But um, being able to go back and say something that you dreamt and worked hard for and achieved is done. And here's a moment in time from when you, cause you can never do that again for the first time. Right. You can never play Broadway right. for the first time ever again. Right. And, uh, I don't just have to remember what that looks like. I can actually go and look at it. Absolutely. I can go and print it out, post it. I can get it framed. Like I, all those pictures. I didn't tell you this, but when I was at well, Will Smith's office and I was at Kevin Hart's office, they have all these, they have a, what is it called? Like a gallery wall? Gallery walls of all these great moments. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, I have all these high quality pictures of all, from the first tour at the Rocky Steps and our first one, me and Melissa laughing at the first love hour and not even have a beard yet. Jojo and this and Tony, like being able to fill your life with moments, you know, like that's the thing that Serene, uh passing gave me even more. And I'm usually even like this, but I think, to me, more it's about cherishing moments. Yeah. Because when you pass away and you're at a funeral, all you have is the memories. Absolutely. The, the reason his service was so beautiful is because everybody had so many positive moments. Even the kid's busted lip and his busted lip yeah. and the music and the him getting people jobs yeah. and like and my own memories with him, you know, and, and the Hawaii trip and just, you know, how much fun he was. I think it makes it easier to move forward because there was no, Tony was saying this. He was like, I don't have a lot of regret. Yeah. I love my kids out loud. I like my kids out loud. And, uh, and his life was cut short, but it was 21 years well lived. And that's, I, I, I hate that it took tragedy 
um, that it takes tragedy for us to remind, to be reminded of how um, fragile life is and how quickly it can be gone, especially as parents. And I think that's why his passing hits more me. I have two sons, same age difference, Mm -hmm. uh, same everything as Tony. So uh, I'm going to finish sleep again. I'd be crying. Uh, But anyway, uh, love to you, love to the people, lots of people who support him. And I feel like as a group, as friends and as audience, not even, you know, just the stage crew with the bakery, the outpouring of love makes you, so overwhelmed. It's, it makes you be able to move forward because you get to be like, man, thank you. Like Tony has said his village and we are part of the village, mm-hmm. but so are the people watching like the, the stage crew, the bakery, angel wings, you know, book club blues. I knew it. I could never oh, say hey. it. It's too many. It's Everybody. Too many things. You said cub. And then but I can't you, do but it. You're like, there's an L somewhere. The blue here, club. Some blues. Ah, forget it. <laughs> Melissa's fan base the is blues. on Facebook, the group. All of us coming together and virtually, that community matters. Absolutely. And I think that's why we win. Stage crew, we win because we have a community that cares right. about people. And I remember when it really clicked for me, it was during the bonus episodes of the 2019 tour when the stage crew was like, y'all y'all look tired. Mm-hmm. If y'all don't have it, y'all should take, take one or two off. Yeah. Right? I think it was like in London. It was. We were getting ready to go to Amsterdam. Mm-hmm. And they were like, y- y'all take some time off. We we care about you as people. It's not just transactional. Yeah. And that's why when they've given money, and that's why I was, that meme of me crying is because I was yeah. I was on Patreon. And somebody screenshot it, which was still funny. Uh, but that's what I'm grateful for that, you know, most audiences don't have this. And the last thing I'm going to say, since we're mostly uh, close-knit family, Patreon and Love Hour, we're planning what I'm going to do next year. And I was talking to my my wife, and she, you know I was like, ah man, clubs again, you know. And I was like, maybe I'll go back to churches. And Liz was like, nah man, theaters. And I was like, girl, you know the theater deals and all this and that. And she was like, you can do it. Your audience will show up, and they'll pay a little more to support you. And then my agent was like, one of the reasons I don't put a lot of people into theaters is because they don't have audiences. When you do going to theaters. Every seat is there to see you. There's no club people yeah. coming. There's no email blast. There's no people just going out for a Friday night. People go to a theater to see someone specifically. Right. And the one thing I know that I can count on is that the stage crew, except for Palm Beach and Miami, <laughs> which will not be on the list. Florida, you might not get a show. You might be getting having to go to Atlanta. Uh, but if I do go, it probably be Orlando. Uh but the one thing that I didn't worry about is those stage crew going to pull up. Yeah. Especially if they know I'm like, all right, here go another leap. They're going to pull up and they're going to play a little more if it's, if it's a little more. And I don't have to worry about, which a lot of people worry about. Do they care? Are they going to show up? Are they going to show up? So that was a long this week in the Fredericks, but it was it worth was. it. It was worth it. And we're going to close out with uh, creating a moment. Uh, you guys know that while we're here talking about memories, uh, one ah, of the things that's it. really important to me is being able Dominic to share Ayala. first-time experiences with each other. And I was going through the grocery store yesterday. I was a day late. I tried to make it a Sunday habit, but it happened yesterday. And uh, I saw these Key Lime Pie limited edition Kit Kats. You don't even like Key Lime. I hate Key Lime Pie. I that's think it's not gross. the point, Kevin. It's not the tell, point, though. Tell them the point, Liz. The point is that... Actually, you do like Key I Lime. I love Key Lime, but I don't know if it's going to work over chocolate. Oh, I absolutely think that this is going to be disgusting. And that's what makes me the most excited. So I'm going to call this segment. I don't know how long we're going to continue to do it through the end of the year. But as much as possible, if you see things in stores that you think are gross, please send them to me or let me know where they are and I will buy them. Because we're calling this love in action. <laughs> Why can't we eat ramen? Or a biscuit or something. Because we know what that <laughs> tastes like. That's to be gross stuff. So this is love in action. I, I like do love this. in action. Love like, in action. I, it's a great. It's a great segment. So uh, do this with your family. Display love in action here, Kevin. Oh wow, that smells very. Oh yeah, let's talk about it so they can oh. imagine. I got this from it. Ralph's, oh. which I think is the equivalent of Safeway. Yes. Okay, and Safeway. no, that's Vaughn's. Kroger. Kroger. Yeah, you're right. It's Kroger. Ralph's isn't in the Vaughn's family? Mm. No. Vons it's Kroger is, family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Kroger. So in case you're interested. All right. So what does it smell like? 
butthole. It, it's an awful it. smell. There's definitely, I, I smell key lime and then the wafer. Yeah, that's what yeah. I smell too. More than the chocolate. This is gross. Well, they said spicy ramen challenge. I'm definitely down for spicy ramen. Oh, that'd be good. Okay. Melissa don't like ramen, so we're going to eat some things that we like and you don't. Uh, oh. it's, she said it smells like diabetes. This smells like key lime wafer chocolate. It smells like what it is. But like, like. It smells like the outer rim of a butt. Perineum bottom. It smells the bottom's like connection. Smell the imagined version of key lime pie. Because key lime pie doesn't actually smell like it's this. It's like if Crystal it's Light not, had a key lime pie. It's key yes. lime LaCroix. Yes. That's exactly what it is. It was like this was in a, <laughs> this was in a restaurant where they served key lime pie and they bumped up against each other. And then they just colored it green. <sighs> okay. I got tired. All right. One, two, three. This is my body. <laughs> this is not the Lord body. <laughs> we are not doing communion over Key Lime Pie Kit Kats, Melissa. <laughs> All right, you ready? How much do we got to eat? Uh, just get a good, don't just eat like the tip, eat a good piece. I knew it, but we're here now. Eat a good piece though. All right. Okay, one, two, three. It's not bad. It's not terrible. The it's lime not good. really sticks out. This is bad. The more you chew it, it gets bad. This is definitely bad. It's like a white chocolate. It is it like is a white, like white chocolate, chocolate. And I don't like white chocolate. I don't like white chocolate. Only black for me. Um, it tastes chalky, which is one of my worst. Uh, it kind of tricks you. It's not bad when you first eat it. And then it gets bad. Uh, I hate chalky. Yeah. It, has, it reminds me of like uh, protein bars. Yes. They have that chalky. Josh, you took another bite. Oh, I got to get a better taste. Oh, I'll run it, out. I'll forget what it tastes like by the time it comes to me. Uh, it also gets, it gets key limey, like tarty, the more you chew it. And then it has a nasty aftertaste. Oh. That's aftertaste not good. aftertaste is the worst. That's not good. Now I'm going to have to have a regular key lime pie. <laughs> hey, that might be the only good reason for going to Florida this week. To watch it. Oh, they yeah. make good key lime exactly. pie? They do make, yep. Key, Key West. Lime Pie be everywhere. Where's Key West? Fort Lauderdale area or yeah. low? Florida I think Keys it's are low. low. Yeah, it's low, right? Yes, yeah, we're flying in. Because we left for, from a cruise over there. We did. That was awful. So don't you bring no matcha in here. I know that. Oh, I should do that. Matcha. Listen, let me tell you what I hate. Matcha. By the way, this weekend we were in Houston. Uh, there was a green tea because my voice is a little uh, sore. So funny. Made this green tea, right? Not paying attention. Take me a healthy swallow. It was matcha green tea. <laughs> matcha tastes like warm, boiled grass to me. <laughs> and not expecting matcha, because I didn't take a smell of it. Oh, yeah, if you don't know. Oh, it was so poignant. <laughs> Kept tasting Pungent. He was like, Pungent. He tasted it, he's like, Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> It's not very good. Did it? Uh, did you feel very manly gagging in front of all of your friends? I didn't feel manly gagging in front of my friends. What Even did though they? I had my manly band on. <laughs> that manly band, I'm wearing them right now. Uh, yeah, the manly yeah. band, it takes a man, makes me feel like a man. You know, look, guys. I'm married to Melissa. She gets this gorgeous ring. Okay, not Tiffany and Co. Just hello, nice. Don't drag us. We is not rich. Come on here. Uh, but all people care about is the woman's ring. It should be six months of the man's salary. Nobody cares how much salary the man gets, except the people down at Manny Bands. I feel like my wedding ring process at first took 37 seconds. Melissa was closed her eyes, went into a bucket of uh, rings. Hello. And <laughs> Hello. <laughs> pulled, pulled out. Well, actually, I bought my own. Not oh, the first one. Uh, the, the first one. Yeah. The second one. Yeah, the second one. Uh, I lost my first one. That's my bad. Because it didn't fit and it wasn't manly. Uh, it really didn't fit, though. No, it didn't. That's why I lost it. But anyway, that would never happen. Which is nice because Manly Band does send you a sizer. They send you a sizer. To and ensure I know, you get the ring that perfectly works. That's right. I'm 10 and a half. And that's, uh, that's one thing that I liked about Manly Bands is... Um, because I was able to get my size when my ring came in, it fit. fit yeah. And I don't have to worry about it falling off or getting lost or whatever. Manly Bands is here to rescue from otherwise hellish band buying experiences. Manly Bands offers 
your hand the freedom to look how you want it in just about every type of earthly material imaginable, even from space. Okay, I turned, I chose mine because I like, look, mine is big and strong. Okay, I got my my it's silver and I got look. my 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 dark, you know, and it's big and chunky. If I socked you, you'd be like, dang, was I getting punched by a manly man? Because I like earthly manly material. I'm sure they don't endorse violence. Titanium alloy, you know what I'm saying? Big strength energy. To get started, order a Manly Man ring sizer for Manly Man to ensure that your ring will perfectly fit for work and play. Once you know your size, it's time for the fun part. Manly Man has an insane collection of materials to choose from. Gold, wood, antler, steel, dinosaur bone, and even the meteorites that killed them. You can also choose from one of Manly Man's curated collections like the Jack Daniels Whiskey Barrel Collection. Okay, I also have this workout Manly Man uh, ring for when I am... You guys know I'm a highly tuned, trained, athletic machine. And I still want to let people know that I am married and taken. Even when I'm at the gym, benching 225 with one arm, I have the free um, athletic ring as well. Once you select your band, Manly Bands offers free shipping worldwide, a 30-day exchange policy, and a free warranty. While there might be 50% chance of your marriage working out, that's always my favorite. there's a 100% chance that you're going to love your band. To order your Manly Bands and get 21% off plus a free silicone ring, go to manlybands.com slash love. Love. That's manlyband.com slash love. Love. For 21% off Manny Bands, the best doggone rings, period tea. Also, if you're like me, you want to lose weight and feel great. But even if you're more like me, you just eating the Kit Kat and you know that you're not supposed to be eating things like that based on the plan for eating that you have. But do we always do the thing we're supposed to do? Huh. No. And that's why I'm glad we have friends like Noom. When it comes to losing weight, there's a lot of pressure to label foods good or bad. But that just creates unnecessary dilemmas. Not everyone wants to be on a strict diet, do tour days at the gym, or drink questionable teas. Instead of trying to cram your life into someone else's idea of health, try Noom. Noom uses a psychology-based approach to find a better, healthier balance that's multiple to your life. And as a result, more sustainable. Look, what's changed since I... I've started using Noom. I've got a better relationship with food. Usually I'm like, oh, I've eaten a burger. I'm so bad. I should eat better. Nope. Milkshake. I should eat better. Nope. Soda. Why am I on this three-month binge of terrible foods? Because in my mind, I've been eating terrible. I've got to continue. But Noom says, hey, man, there's no such thing as a good food or a bad food. If you have a little bit of a disgusting Kit Kat bar you know you're supposed <laughs> to have, not supposed to have, that's okay. Not Recalibrate. <laughs> For lunch, have the thing you were supposed to have. Protein, healthy greens, drink your water. Don't continue to go and get something even more unhealthy like the bacon cheeseburger that you've been thinking about from the cafe across the way. Make the right choice, and Noom helps you. Noom's cognitive behavioral approach helps you unlearn bad habits and better understand your relationship with food. 80% of Noom users find the program, and over 60% have stuck with their goals for at least one year. No need to fear running no need to fear ruining the whole program with one off day. Noom will help you get back on track. All you need is a daily 10-minute check-in, no grueling early mornings or huge chunks out of your day. Start building better habits for healthier long-term results. Sign up for your trial at Noom.com slash Love Hour. Love Hour. That's N-O-O-M dot com slash Love Hour. Love Hour. For your trial. And now back to this show. All right, really quickly uh, to kind of transition what I wanted to talk about that uh, first part a little took a little bit longer than I anticipated, but that's okay um, because I wanted to talk about the master class on relationships that is the show Love on the Spectrum on Netflix. <laughs> Hilarious. The master class on relationships. I'm going to tell you why. So if you're unfamiliar with this show, you absolutely should watch it. It is a show about uh, young people that are on the autism spectrum looking for love. And they have this expert that comes in and she teaches them like relationship cues, communication cues, how to hold a conversation, all of these things. And the uh, my sister is actually the culprit behind why we've all watched this show. Mel or Nick? Mel, definitely Mel. Because she watches the most random things. Like, she works for Netflix and seems to find the most, like, obscure things to watch. She instead does. of, like, everyone's watching Bridgerton. And she's like, no. Love on the Spectrum is Def where the real you story is. is what I'm going to watch instead. Deaf you. Deaf you. Yeah, you should watch that as well. Because apparently it's just, like, the real Housewives of Atlanta. Um, 
So anyway, she had us watching the stay at home crew was watching this uh, over the weekend. Stay at home crew. The stay at home crew is me, Mel, Danny, and Marcus. And I was telling Joshua about it. He, did you binge all five episodes of the first season? Absolutely. Not. <laughs> no, I watched the first episode and it was twelve o'clock. I was like, my eyes are bleeding, so I am going to bed. But I will be binging it tonight. If you're uh, like I said, if you're unfamiliar, it is the best. And the reason why I call it a mastercast is because of this, because these people. Uh, are autistic and they miss social cues and they there's no learning of like appropriate you know quote unquote appropriate behavior they just say what comes natural mm -hmm. and it's often just honest and we watched the first season Melissa and I, I didn't see the second season and it was like one of the dates the guy was like you're not that attractive and I was like <gasps> and yes. she was like I know and I was like wait what and then they had a great date Yes. After that. What threw me off was watching the parents just talking about them as if they're not in the room, yes. but them being in the room and then just acknowledging. Yes. Like they don't, I mean, I don't know if it's universal, but it didn't seem like a lot of that conversation was taken personally where I, right. I would be insecure in those moments. So like, wait, why would you say that? I'm yeah. right here? <laughs> right. They. Why do you say it's a masterclass where they I'm communicate like that? I'm going to tell you. Because I interrupt Michael, you. Michael uh, from the show. Do you remember Michael? I do remember Michael. He's the best. He is the best, cl clearly the star of the show on accident <laughs> because he's just so honest. Well, season two is I call it a masterclass because if all of us was just as honest and transparent in our relationships, mm. all, most of our issues wouldn't exist. Do you want to talk about uh, you do or do Might not? as well. So y'all, this is the last season of the Love Hour. We are, we're opening up our hearts to y'all. But it ain't gonna go into 2022. No, and I'm 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 even gonna keep some. Uh, it won't be everything anyway. Okay. So anyway, I was thinking about obviously the um, uh, uh, love on the spectrum. Again, highly recommend. It's very heartwarming. You laugh because you just can't imagine being as honest as to say like uh, I didn't watch this part because I went to go pick up the kids. But I think Mel was telling me that Michael said to one of the girls he was dating like the date was over and he was just like. Okay, you should go see your mom. She's probably that way. <laughs> I, love I love it. Because how many of us, it's me, have been in scenarios where you're like, the conversation's over, and I don't know how to tell you that it's over. So I sit here in awkwardness, yes, trying to think of something to say, and all I really want to say is, God bless you, good night. You should go see your mom. You should go. She's probably that way. She's waiting for you. She's waiting for you. <laughs> Do not keep that woman waiting. That way. So leave me be. Go see her. We don't do that. No, we don't. And I think if we... We overthink. We overthink. So, again, going back, we went to... Uh, we started couples therapy. We have been looking for a couples therapist for... A couple months, at least. Actually, at least a couple months. And it's been probably... Yeah, uh, we'll say a couple months. I, I have paid for... Uh, not better help. Uh, but I have paid... We would have found the right one if we were with yeah. them. Yeah. Uh, but I have paid for the subscription on a few different like couple therapy type places that I know I did not like. <laughs> we had one guy, I won't go into detail about it, but um, yeah, my personal advice is this. If you do not, because I've also gone through my own personal struggle of finding a personal therapist as well. If you do not connect with your therapist, I'm going to say at the end of your second session. Yeah. I think I got to let it go. I think you should let it go. Just based on my own personal experience, usually by the end of the first, you're like, eh, I don't really know. Give it another go, just in case. By the second, if it ain't but good, let it go. by the end of the second. Because otherwise you're going to think therapy's not working. Right. And it's really therapist. Yes. And right. you got to have a match. The, the, the client... Therapist relationship has to be a good match. Got to be a good vibe. So when we had uh, the EFT, the attachment theory therapist on, uh, I can't think of her name right now, but she's out of uh, Bozeman, like Montana. Um, when we had her on and she was talking about the emotionally focused therapy, I was like really intrigued. And I was intrigued because what I realized, every therapist that I've had, for the short period of time that I've had each of them, <laughs> uh, they've always told me that I am like 
uh, emotionally intelligent or really insightful or very self-aware. Like these are words that I've, I think that about myself anyway, yeah. but then to hear it from someone who's a professional and this is only our, you know, you know, we've only met a handful of times is like, okay, you know, I'm not off base here, but I think what it did was with everything that I've read and I know and listened to and da, 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 it's made solely uh, talk therapy not as effective for me that I thought it would be. Yeah. If that makes sense. What do you mean talk therapy? Sitting here and just talking. So what's going on? And so what happened? Oh. And, da, 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 and just kind of doing that how's kind the, of. How's EFT different? So what was different for me with um, this lady, this is, well, I guess our second time, first time together, second time meeting yeah, her. Yeah. And immediately after the first one, I was like, I know I'm going to like her. Yeah. Because even when we were talking yesterday, and I think this is the part of it that's like emotionally focused. And I'm saying this in case you're, I know you're tired. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. In case you are uh, looking for a therapist and you're not like getting what you need is that she doesn't allow you to stay heady about it. No. So talk therapy to me is we're just, you're just kind of talking. Uh, maybe you're going to talk about your past and yada, yada, yada. But even when we were talking to her yesterday, we're going through things cause we know the things and we can say the things. Mm -hmm. And she's like, Let's take it one step at a time. Mm -hmm. Let's slow down. Yeah. And I'm noticing that you're crying. What's happening for you? Yes. And I think that she's like, let's stay in the emotion. And of when what's Melissa happening. said that, Kevin, what did that make you feel like? Yes. And what did you feel like in the moment? Yes. What's it like to see her feeling this way now? And then you have to, you realize, at least I did, I'm having more emotions that I'm not communicating communicating nor even acknowledging a lot of times i'm just pushing yes you know what i'm saying which is why i said the uh for the love on spectrum love on the spectrum is a master class because there is no there's nothing hidden mm -hmm. right there's nothing hidden it is straight away like uh um you know, if you have a banking and you have hidden fees or hidden ATM fees or some of that, you don't, you're unaware of it. That's unfair to you. Mm -hmm. And that's why Chime is here because what they are is an award winning app and debit card, debit card that has no overdraft fees, foreign transaction fees, monthly service fees, or transfers fees. They have over 60,000 fee free. No hidden fees, baby. In network ATMs at locations like Walgreens, 7 Eleven, CVS, and so much more. We have personal testimony from Joshua. It's time to say goodbye to hidden fees. Join the millions of Americans already loving Chime. Sign up only takes two minutes and doesn't affect your personal credit score. Get started today at chime.com slash love. That's chime.com slash love. Love. Banking services provided by and debit card issued by the Bank Corp Bank or Stride Bank NA. Members FDIC out of network ATM withdrawal fees apply except at Money Pass ATM in a 7 Eleven location and at any All Point or Visa Plus Alliance ATM. Other fees such as third party and cash deposit fees may apply. Um, so, anyway, we were, uh, as we were talking yesterday, and the lady was asking, well, did you share that? Well, did you share that? Mm -hmm. And neither, either one of us hadn't shared, but what was so unique or interesting, it was like sweet is the word she used, is not saying something to your partner, trying to protect them, and then inadvertently harming them. Oh, you talk about an aha moment. Say you more. talk about an aha moment. So... If this were love on the spectrum, I think in this scenario, we, I would have said this, this, that, and that, right? What ended up happening, is it, is it hard to tell without telling what happened? Um, I mean, I guess you can try to provide some context. Okay. So we broke, uh, we were in Philly, uh, Joshua, me, Angel, to here. The first night we had to perform where the audience knew that Serene passed away. I saw the picture that Josh was talking about that Serene posted and I broke down crying. So I text Melissa like, man, I just started crying hysterically. Right. And she was like hysterically. And at that moment, I'm like, uh oh, mm -hmm. she's 3000 miles away. She going she going to worry about me. She going to feel like, you know, she wish she was there. She going to feel all these things. 
So I back up a little bit. I'm like, maybe not hysterically, but I was crying hard, right? So we get back to, I'm about to say Washington. How long have we been in the move? I do that, Stu, too. Get back to Los Angeles, California, where we've lived for eight years. <laughs> We're talking about it, and Josh and Angel tell him, Melissa, like, boy, your husband was crying hysterically, mm -hmm. basically. They didn't say that. So Melissa was like, so you were crying hysterically. So at that moment, she was feeling that we talked about. She's feeling like, I want you to share your honest feelings so I can be there for you, right? But in my protection, I'm like, oh, I don't want you to be worried. I don't want you to feel bad, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I thought I was helping us, right? right? By not making you feel bad. But the truth of the matter is, because we're so far often, she wants to feel my sadness, even if she can't fix it, right? She wants to know if you're crying hysterically, I want to know, I want to be there for you in whatever way I can. I'm like, oh, baby girl, don't worry about it. Don't, don't worry. So I didn't communicate that to her, which made her feel like I didn't share my true feelings, right? Which I didn't, but not for the reason she might've thought. And then she didn't communicate how that made her feel. Mm -hmm. And we didn't realize this until we're in therapy. And I'm like, girl, I didn't want to do that. I want to make you feel bad. And you're like, well, I want, I want to feel bad. I want to feel bad you with me, Kevin. You're my Kevin. I want you to feel bad you share with me, Lisa. But she didn't express to me how that made her feel. Right. So further on, I do something else that had I known how that made her feel in this moment, I would have been like, oh, this is far more serious. I won't make that mistake. So because she didn't say that, I did something else that was even worse along the same yeah. lines. All that could have been, ab been avoided had we shared our honest feelings and stood in that honesty. Like hysterically, yes, mm -hmm. hysterically. Loud, uncontrollably. Textbook definition of <laughs> hysteria. <laughs> hysteria. <laughs> Literally, except for the part about trying to associate hysteria with the hysterectomy, Men were trash back then. But textbook definition of hy hysteria. Um, but we learn in that moment by prying to protect each other from hurt, you inadvertently hurt. Whether somebody steps on your pinky toe on accident or on purpose, with the same weight, it hurts the same. And I think it goes back to uh, the earlier, again, a lot of the revelations that uh, I've shared on this podcast, I think... Uh, as sad as I am about this podcast, one thing that I recently have realized is I am the student of this podcast. In as much as I'm here um, sharing my revelations to everyone, I receive them first. Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. it has been my own ultimate masterclass yeah. in teaching me how to navigate this world. Not that I have it all together, because, again, this is a very recent example. And only a few weeks earlier did I realize that communication involved being transparent, being honest, yeah. and being vulnerable. That's, go ahead. The other, well, I just want to add to that, and, I, and not, I don't want to break your chain of thought. The other thing that's hard about that is doing it in real time. Yes. So many of these things are easy hindsight or with the help of a therapist. The hard part is doing it real time. This is the time, Kevin. Yes. Hysteria. Hysterical. Let Melissa know. Girl, I said hysteria, not hey Siri. Let Melissa know that you are feeling hysterical, yes. even though because I don't want you to feel bad because I know you're far, which is a good intention. Right. But bad result. Right. Okay, go ahead. That I think you're 100 percent right, but that well, let me finish your whole thought there. I was listening to a podcast this morning about um, therapy, couples therapy, that kind of thing, and he was uh, the, actually he had a guest on, and she was talking about how even when you know better, in the moment you become so flooded that you don't always do better. Yeah. You don't always do what you know to do better, and so. Uh, part of the emotionally focused therapy is the experience of the doing better. Yeah. So you learn the mechanics of it all, even if, you know, your natural inclination is to, you know, shut down. Right. If I learn the mechanics and what that feels like, then I can, then it becomes a discipline that I can do even when my inclination is to do the opposite. Absolutely. And that's what therapy is for me. Yes. It's the coping mechanisms and the skills to say, okay, let me slow down. That's what our therapist said so much. So many times yesterday. Let me slow down. Okay, the next time this happens, because obviously I can't do that one over again. But the next time I have an opportunity of like, Kevin, you're, you're, you're not sharing the full truth with Melissa. Why? 
Are you afraid? Mm -hmm. Is it your ego? Is it your machismo? Is it you want to protect her? Okay, now, knowing those reasons why you need to identify those, play that tape forward. What happens in your relationship in the past when you don't share your true feelings? Right. Melissa doesn't get a clear picture of how you feel, which makes us feel less connected, blah, blah, blah. And now I can say, okay. Because what you end up having to do is do something very hard. Oh, yeah. Which is share the truth in real time, as uncomfortable as it is. And if we're being honest, part of the reason we don't do it is because it's uncomfortable for us. Absolutely. And nothing occurs in a vacuum. Nope. So also recognizing, and this is why I think that third party is so important, also recognizing that because nothing occurs in a vacuum, you're not just doing this just because. Yeah. The dynamics of your relationship have informed you such that you don't share for whatever reason. And so not sharing becomes a form of protection. Uh, of yourself, you mean? Of yourself. Yeah. Because the last time I did this, I felt hurt in whatever way yeah. that looks like for you. And so what that does is you pull away emotionally. On top of that, Melissa and I were having a conversation last night. Uh, and, you know, I asked her something, right? And this was really, you guys, the love hour, you're so lucky. And she said... I hear what you're saying mm -hmm. based on previous interactions about this topic. It's going to be hard for me to do what you're asking, right? That allows me to take that information in and say, okay, what can we do? Right. Right. And that takes a lot of thought, mm -hmm. care, uh, and, uh, time, right. To say this won't work. Right. Younger Kev will be like, I want it. I want it like this though. Because this is the way it works for me. Right. Well, it doesn't work for Melissa. And we're in a partnership. So uh, actually what you said was, what are some baby steps we can take to get yes. there? This is the ultimate goal. Right. Be a, oh, you say this and I could take it. Say this and I could take it. But the problem is, this is where being married for 17 years and being together for 21 years, you have years of research. Yes. Of in this scenario, when X happens, Y happens. Right. Your body remembers. Your mind remembers. Even though I know you're saying this would be different, everything in me says no. Yeah, right. I have too much research. My data tells me that 99 times out of 98, yes. you will respond this way. Right. And that's going to make me feel this way. I don't want to feel this way. So I can't do that right now. And all of that happens on an unconscious level. Yeah. Uh, it's just after years of, you know, kind of being informed in that way, your natural, your body is going to protect itself. That's its first job is to protect itself. And so sometimes that looks like I have to, and that's why people wind up divorced is because I've, I'm so hurt that I've emotionally dis, uh, detached, oh, I'm so most good. emotionally disengaged, I'm disconnected, and that's only going to reinforce the way you feel about me, which is going to have you disengage, disconnect, detach, which is only going to reinforce how I'm feeling. And so you get in that cycle where we're both disengaged, disattached, or dis detached, and disconnected, and no one knows how to pay, repair it. Look, Shanisi Muhammad in Patreon said, You've conditioned yourself to do what's safe. Absolutely. And that doesn't mean it's right, but it is safe. And the biological nature of human beings yes. is to find safety. Absolutely. And emotional pain feels like pain. So your yes. body's like, ah, 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 we're not going to do that. Yes. That hurt us. Don't you, girl, you don't remember that? The last 20, 100%. 20 times that hurt us? Right. Even, when, you know, Melissa said this before. It's so funny to me. Melissa, y'all know she shut down, right? She said, I be shut down. Looking at myself, like going out of my body, looking at myself like, girl, you need to snap out of that. Mm -hmm. And then you'd be like, I can't, though. I should, though, but I can't. Mm -hmm. And that is so true about us. Just because we know the right thing to do doesn't mean Absolutely. we can actually do it in that moment, especially if it makes you feel safe to do the opposite. Right. As unhealthy as it is, like a cigarette, as unhealthy as a cigarette is, if it makes you feel comfortable and safe and you just had a, a jittery moment, you know I'm about, I'm about to suck on this nicotine. Yes. It's not good for me. Right. But I need to calm down and feel safe. And I think uh, I wanted to say this. Ghosting is a thing in the news about people, you know, you talk, whatever, and you just stop. I, I saw somewhere, I think it was a therapist that was saying, sometimes people ghost people because they can't deal with the truth 
is that they've done something wrong to them. Mm-hmm. And if I continue talking to you, you're going to make me feel bad about a mistake I know I, mean, I made. Yeah. It's not always the other person did you sure. wrong. It's that I don't really want to deal with my yeah. actions, so I'm just going to go. And I think because it, the uncomfortable is hard and we tend to avoid it. But in a marriage, I was telling Melissa last night, this is the only way we stay happily married for 30, 40, 50 years. Mm-hmm. I think people can easily decide I'm going to stay married, but that means I'm going to close off this part of me. And I know I'm never going to expect you to do that. And I'm going to basically close out a part of happiness. And I think when people get divorced after 30, 40 years, it's because that part that died is just like, I don't even want to do this anymore. The the therapist was talking about, uh, she called it what, uh, basement work? Yeah. Of uh, releasing and getting that type, that level of vulnerability with your partner. And I think we often can, you know, stay above the basement. Um, but things when they're deep and they're scary, you protect yourself because you don't know what you're going to find. And she said it was like walking in a basement with no light on. Yeah. It's already scary, but it's dark. Yeah. And it's uncomfortable. You're kind of like, you know, you put your feet out yes. to make sure you're not stepping on a nail or something like that. But she was like, if you want a good foundation, you got to go into the basement and sure that up. And I was like, dang, girl, that was good. And so and and recognizing that uh, whether you are a shutdowner or you're a person that's a chaser. And so you're going to nitpick and argue and fight that it's all coming from a place of fear that I feel like uh, this relationship, what we're feeling is so shaky and unsure that I don't know what to do. And so for me, that looks like I, I f- I'm feeling very unsafe in this environment. And I don't mean physical safety. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. But like, I'm, yeah, I'm not feeling very emotionally safe. So I can't share with you. And so I'm going to protect and hold on. For some people, it's like I'm feeling so unsafe right now as well. But we're going to fix this. So I'm going to give you everything. Yeah. And regardless, those are not uh, the, the basis of emotionally focused therapy is the attachment theories. Yeah. Neither one of those is stemming from a secure attachment. Right. And so that's the whole point. That's what people are like, you know, arguing and fighting is just as bad as shutting down. And it's true because it all is stemming from that same place of fear yes. and a um, insecure attachment. Absolutely. Anything else? No. Great. <laughs> I, Monique said, I need you to put this part in a separate clip so I can send it to my hubby. So good. Yeah, this was, I mean, this is kind of what I wanted to talk about. In addition, I wanted to talk about that thing that was going viral, but I won't do it about the, um, yeah, about the guy who did the the flowers thing. I started following him on Instagram. He got a brand deal just really quickly from a flowers flowers company. The other thing is that he provided context for why he posted that. And he has like a relationship podcast. It was just very interesting to not get so wrapped up in the moment of a tweet and now to get it a few weeks, however long a yeah, week later. Yeah, yeah. And now he's providing a lot more context and I've researched him a little bit and I'm like, Oh, you're not exactly who I would presume simply based off this tweet. Get him on the show. I honestly am thinking about it. I have to do a little bit more research on him just to make sure like yeah. who he is, kind mm-hmm. of what he stands for. But you do the research that ESPN didn't do why that fake high school got on TV. Yes. <laughs> oh, I don't know this. Uh, that we talked about on the podcast. Oh, but if um if he is as uh you know legit as he seemed, and he did, because I was like, are you trolling? Then I was so confused. But then I was like, no, no, no. He was just kind of tweeted something offhand, didn't realize what it was going to do. He probably did his own self reflection and then kind of came yeah. back. So anyway. Really, really. Um, we'll talk about it, y'all. Y'all don't know the flowers thing. We'll talk about it oh. if we talk about it. Uh, <laughs> well, in that regard, if you're interested, go to on Twitter. His name is King Solomon or Sully S U L I breaks, um, and that's also his Instagram as well. And you can kind of see uh, the sequence of events. Anyway, thank you guys so much for joining us on today's Love Hour episode. Uh, last, last, last thing. I am thinking about doing your Love Hour guest favorites to close out the Love Hour for the last maybe four to six weeks. So, uh, uh, Catherine, if we can do a post actually on the Love Hour page and I can get people to send me their favorites, I will start coordinate those so those people can come back. Don't you get Stevon Lewis back because I've heard enough about imposter syndrome. Uh, Enough from you. uh, Chad, I do need Stevon though because he ain't a ticket. 
He ran the corner. That's true. Von Lewis would be back to drag yes. us some more. So anyway, yeah, send me your favorites because I want to start lining them up uh, for the end of the year, probably in November into December, um, depending on how many we have, maybe starting even in October. Should we do people that we haven't done too that, they, that we, they'd that like to see us before we finish? I mean, listen, send Somebody said the friends, and I was like, I don't think we have the, the weeks have the are friends. limited. Send anybody. Oh, LeBriant and yeah, um, Fanica. Because you only got what? It's going to be September. Mm-hmm. September. October, November, December. And I'm only doing like two weeks in December. December so it's in three days. It's too. 14 episodes. Yes. Yeah, so send them to me. Uh, yeah, I mean, y'all telling me now, but do it on the post so we can keep record of them. Thank you guys so much. Bye.